Hello, friends. It is I, Self-Critical Automaton. Uh, forgive me, Father, for it has been nearly a goddamn month since I last streamed. I've been really unwell. Who knew? And also, to be honest, my Xbox controller is broken, so... It, it kind of sucks to play, uh, play games like The Inimitable Hollow Knight. Hi, Lisa. Good to see you. So, given that issue, I may be terrible at this, especially considering I'm in the end game zone that I was struggling with previously. But, uh, hopefully, we should all be good. To be honest, I really regret not having streamed in, like, a month. I just can never find the time. I've been struggling so much to keep on top of things. Which probably means that I'm going to completely fail at the ridiculous platforming challenge that I've been struggling with. But, uh... Oh yeah, there's no map of this zone either. Just to make it additionally difficult. But I really ought... I've actually come into a little bit of a windfall, so I ought to get a non-broken Xbox controller at some point. Oh, hang on. Is this literally... Are the buttons not working? No, it's fine. Okay. Anyway, this is completely impromptu. I have not... Uh, like... prepared for this stream in any way. Uh, I just realised that after the first couple of weeks, I was starting to put it off, and I really ought to just go for it and get back to actually streaming. I'm gonna have to completely figure this out again. This is a like lengthy and complex jumping puzzle. Don't think I can go up, can I? Can't go down. I remember becoming infuriated with it. But then this is the like secret final boss end zone, so it's fine. Okay. The real difficulty is that it's the 3D stick on this controller that's broken. Which means that wiggling into the right position is surprisingly difficult. I'm not sure if I'm all the way back at the beginning or if this is like part way through. Whoops. I think this is like most of the way through an extremely long and frustrating set of jumping puzzles. It's quite irritating the way that they've changed Xbox controller manufacturer. It used to be that you could just get um, your proper Xbox controller and various knockoffs, but now if you want an Xbox controller that works, you need a you need to pay fifty pounds for a uh, Xbox One controller, Xbox One X rather, because all Xbox One controller production has been outsourced to a company that makes garbage, shitty ones, which is infuriating. Oh, I wonder if that's a shortcut, huh? God, the spikes everywhere. As I said, this is like the the secret hidden end game, real actual final bosses zone. Which is why I'm struggling. Eventually I will post the... Uh... Oh hey, I can just recharge my hit points. Eventually I'm going to post the uh, archive of the previous stream where I made my way most of it. I wonder if I can... Can I ride that up? Nope, moves too fast. Hmm. Do I have more time? I think if I goes down, I get a bit more time.
But yeah, this is a brick wall to bash your head against. Definitely, definitely a smart idea to get through 90%, I hope, of the single toughest jumping puzzle in the entire game. And then, uh, and then not play the game for a month. But, somewhere there is a king, and he must be killed, because such is the nature of kings. They're very large, and you must kill them. Okay, now that was my busted controller. But yeah, so if you want if you want a good controller, you need to pay 50 quid for one of the official Xbox One X controllers. And all of the other ones will break really easily because they've been outsourced to a company called Power A. I had an Xbox 360 controller, which lasted me for 10 years of gaming. I had an Xbox One controller that lasted me for another 10 years of gaming. And now I'm trying to find one or the other of those. And you can't get one for love nor money, as they say. Oh, well, this is the worst possible moment to need to scratch my nose, isn't it? <laughs> now see, I should say, what does it tell us about the nature of the king of this realm? That his infinite dying dream is this endless crystalline palace. Ha! <laughs> I've won. Um, oh, motherfucker. But it's this endless crystalline palace rather than whatever else you might imagine. This is weird. This feels like a shortcut. Maybe that's so that I can get back. Oh god, they're not going to make me do the whole puzzle in reverse later, are they? They would, wouldn't they? Anyway, so I figured even if in a day or two I get around to buying myself a new controller that actually works, I should play a bit for today at least to get myself back in the habit. then I can get back to actually streaming more regularly, which I've been wanting to do for forever. I'm not really sure what's been... Oh, for fuck's sake. Basically, the problem with this controller specifically is that it's um, it's lost its neutral position. So it doesn't have stick drift in the traditional sense that a controller has stick drift, which is where the neutral position becomes misaligned so that the game... so that the the input received when it is in the neutral position becomes move left or whatever. But instead, what's happened with this one is that it's become sort of physically weak because the Power A controllers are like so flimsily designed. If you hold an Xbox One controller and a, and a Power A Xbox One controller, you can feel the physical difference in them. The Power A ones are much more cheaply produced. Yeah, so I, I've got two options. I can go on eBay and try and find an original Microsoft Xbox One controller or an original Microsoft Xbox 360 controller, ideally. See, that was another problem with the thing. So yeah, it's completely lost its neutral position, which means that uh, it's always the stick is always tilting one way or the other, and it's almost impossible to get it to balance on the center neutral point. Which is not easy. Oh, huh. I guess jump past it when it's coming down, not up. Anyway, we could ask the question, what does it say about the king of this ancient realm? that he has this sort of idealized crystal memory of what his kingdom was once like. But what the question I want to ask is, what does it say about the king of this realm? 
that his beloved infinite crystal memory realm of his idealized kingdom is fucking full of infinity spikes. Oh, there might be an easier way. Can I get up from underneath? No, I can't. Ah, oh, fuck. Well, but it's better than dying, I guess. It is quite literally better than death. Although, I suppose one of the thematic thrusts of this game in general is is dwelling endlessly in, a, in an infinite nostalgia better than allowing things to simply die and move on and become what they would naturally be in the next stage of their lives. Oof, okay. I'm definitely finding this a lot easier than I did the last time around. Comic timing on dying there, but... I remember I'd gotten really frustrated by this point and I just could not get past these jumping puzzles. Um, on the other hand, I'm not sure if this is part way through the horrible endless circular sword jumping puzzle. But yeah, you know, what does it say about your king that his his imagined perfect realm has nothing but death traps? Yeah, every time every time I, I spawn in and immediately jump into a thing to my death, that's because there's no neutral position on this. In fact, after this controller broke, I bought another one thinking it must have been just a dud, but that one was also just as flimsy and terrible, and it broke in a different way. It's got a bunch of buttons that don't work when you push them. And a third one that broke in a, in a more exciting way where it's a uh, stick, just like stutter steps for some reason. So if you push forwards to move forwards, you don't move forwards, you you like stutter step uh, very slightly. For some reason, it's only sending like an intermittent signal. Anyway, all I've done since I started play this is talk about how the king of this realm must be a total dipshit for having decided to install nothing but death traps in his idealized wedding cake of a palace. Whoopsie daisy. That was recoverable actually. I could have uh I could have pogoed off the uh off the whatchamacallit. These things. You know, the doodads, the thingamies, the whatchamacallits, the widgets. I can't think of any more filler words. Um The horrible death spikes. There we go, I made it with slightly more hit points this time. Now, how am I supposed to get up there? I'm pretty sure I must have done it previously. Because I remember a puzzle that I'm not seeing here, but I don't know if that's because I got past this or not. Do I have to try and... I'm going to have to like try and time a jump so that I jump here, and then I get up past it, and then I attack down. Like that. Then I'm going to have to jump onto this wall segment in time to jump away again before it unsticks. That's fucking insane. They can't expect me to do this. It's ridiculous. Whoops. Fuck. Well, okay. Mm. I get that it's endgame challenge zone, but I, I don't like it. I want to go home. Oh yeah, you also don't leave a ghost here, because it's a memory. But instead of getting spawned outside, you spawn back in wherever you last rested within the memory zone. Just kind of interesting. It doesn't really tie... Hollow Knight doesn't really tie its like respawn mechanic into its lore in the way that Dark Souls does, which is one of the only departures it makes from the from the Dark Souls uh, formula. Dark departures, if you fuck, if you will. I think I can, if I can slide on a wall as it goes past, I think I can do that. The issue is jumping.
Instead of going by muscle memory, maybe I should actually try and learn the pattern of how this works. So if you let it go up, then you can get to here. And then here, you need to wait until it comes down. And then time your jump so that you don't do that. So that you are sliding on the wall in the instant that it comes down past you. And then you can do that. Anyway, this probably won't be a full stream. I'll probably do like an hour or something, because maybe I got a stew going. It's stewing away on my stovetop in the other room. That was way easier than I was making it previously. And uh, also because I'm not very well, because that's the other reason I haven't been streaming. Partly because my controller's busted, and partly because I've just been really, in general, unwell all of the damn time. The stew is a a pretty like bottom of the barrel cheaply made thick beef stew. Holy shit, I made it. There's no bench. Why isn't there a bench? I need to rest on a bench. Ugh. Yeah, this looks familiar. But then it all looks familiar. This thing's locked and I can hear a guy. Okay. Anyway, it's just a beef stew. I've been making a lot of stews lately because I... Uh, because of my many and varied disabilities, I tend to... batch cook meals on the days when I can cook stuff and then just eat that the rest of the time. I made a really good pasta sauce last week. Motherfucker. Uh, so it's... Uh, beef, which I seared with a, like, uh, spice and herb kind of mix. Oh, I remember this, yes. Hmm. I think I carefully titrated where I needed to be, and I think it's here. Nope, that's going to hit my head on the thing. <gasps> no, it worked. Just an endless train of death traps. I think I said when I... Uh, work my way through this zone previously on the previous stream that it feels almost Gygaxian. It feels like very old school D&D &D, where someone is actively trying to fuck with you. And the important thing is your ability to come up with stuff and then they will actively like figure out how to destroy the thing that you were figuring out. Hi Alice. I'm talking about how the puzzle, the jumping puzzle design here feels Gygaxian in nature because it's Bullshit and hates my guts. Like, I can see why... I can see why they would make, want to make a mega, hyper, super difficult bonus final challenge for the end of the game, but... Yeesh. Adversarial is exactly the word. But it's more adversarial than adversarial game design usually is, it feels like. It feels almost personal. <laughs> it feels almost targeted, which I know it isn't, because it... Literally, physically can't be, but... It feels like you figure out what to do and then it immediately fucks you. It feels like I want to be the guy, which I absolutely would consider an adversarial game design. Oh hey, what happens if I... fucking kill myself by slamming my head into spikes? Um... The fuck was I talking about? I was talking about the adversarial stuff. Before that, I was talking about beef stew. So yeah, I seared up some lovely beef. Um, got a nice, got a nice sear on it because I used ch some chana flour I had lying around because I don't eat gluten. Um, and that works pretty good for flour applications. And then it's uh, turnips, swedes. Uh, parsnip. Uh, turnip, parsnip, swede, carrot, onion, and... Uh, leek. Oh, god damn it. 
Yeah, these platforms are extremely minuscule. This is the this is the end game final bosses like approach zone. You have to have completed like a bunch of side quests and a really long kind of like side path to get here. Uh, but then once you get here, you find out the secret of reality by beating the final boss or some shit like that. The problem is that boss is hidden behind aggressively fiendish jumping puzzles. Every I remember saying last time I was working my way through this zone. Last time I was streaming, however long ago that was. Hi, hi, Bina. That it's just like, it's an absolute grind. It's such a slog. And every step of the way, you you finally, uh, like you clock something, you figure out how to get through it, and you're like, okay, I've solved it. I know how to do this puzzle. And then you go to the next room, and you're like. Okay, this is that puzzle, I can do it, because I know the method, and then you use that method, and then they've designed an additional step to the puzzle, which actively fucks you for trying to rely on what worked the previous time. It's remarkable. But it will definitely be easier when I'm not playing with a broken controller. Of my small stable of tragically destroyed controller, motherfucker. Ah. This one particularly has the energy of like a passing freight train. Just getting obliterated. Yeah, pretty much. It's it's actually very similar to the the JRPG secret final boss paradigm. The actual final boss of this game was pretty easy. I haven't uploaded the archive of that stream yet, but uh, it will be on YouTube sooner or later. Um, so it's fair that I'm looking for an additional challenge. I think there's like no bosses I haven't beaten that aren't like a handful of special dream dream zone refight bosses which i can't really be bothered to do because i would actually quite like to move on to doing another full game stream now like i want to pick back up with resi because i haven't uh oh god damn it because i was streaming resi last halloween last year and i had to stop for no real reason other than that I wanted to finish this game. And here I am in the final zone. <laughs> so here it is, the final curtain, something, something. I did it my way, something. Something tells me this might be one of the final rooms because there's unlockable gates here. However, that's exactly the kind of like hope destroying trick that this sequence of puzzles was pulled previously because the puzzles I've been I've been struggling with today are only the like the latest step of a lengthy lengthy chain of puzzles that I was dealing with last time. Oh, that was close. Yeah, this is I think this is where I got really stuck. I spent 2 hours getting to this point or something like that and then I was just Stuck here. Ow! God damn it. That neutral position problem is really awful. The really, really sparse respawn points as well are what make it awful. If there was a if there was a bench every screen, I would be fine. And I would stop screaming <laughs> internally. Can I just... Oh, that's so much easier. <laughs> I was making this harder than it had to be. Much like challenge mode of playing with a broken controller. Maybe I should save this broken controller and just uh, keep it for like special streams. I've already decided that if my, my 100 follower stream is going to be a full playthrough of Mirror's Edge in one session. 
assuming I'm physically able to do such a marathon. It's only about four hours. But... Uh, but I think playing games with a, a broken controller would be a good one to have as well. Maybe for 250. Although I don't know what game I would play. Maybe Dark Souls. Although I have been playing Dark Souls with this controller because I'm never not playing Dark Souls. And it's mostly been fine. It's only got me killed twice. Which is more than I'd like. I'm good enough at Dark Souls that dying twice is frustrating. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> it's that neutral position problem again. See, like, once you've cracked each individual piece of the puzzle, you can usually pretty consistently get past those pieces of the puzzle. It's just tedious to have to do it over and over because... There's no respawn point. So every time you come to a new segment of the puzzle, you know, you have to spend all your hit points figuring out how to bypass the new segment. But then... You can't, like... What was I saying? Every time, every time you come to a new segment of the puzzle, you're like, okay, great. Time to spend all of my hit points trying to get through this puzzle. And then you have to redo all of the stuff that you've proved you can consistently do afterwards. That's what's irritating about it. That's what rent, that's what takes this from like good hard game design to like frustrating hard game design, I think. Cause like the rest of this game has been pretty easy for the most part. Like, I think I had more trouble with Shovel Knight, like. But this one, this is a real spicy platforming challenge. I wonder if the developers just wanted to show that they had a little bit of that I want to be the guy spiciness to them somewhere. If you don't know what I want to be the guy is, look it up. It's really interesting. Uh, as a cultural artifact of gaming. As one of the first, like, recognisable Sado core games. As they, I believe, were known. I've never beaten I Wanna Be The Guy. I've never gotten more than a few screens in because I found it so frustrating, but you know, the realest hardcore gamer of them all, my little brother, I believe once beat I Wanna Be The Guy. See, I like a challenge. I don't, oh, this was it. This was what broke me. Yeah, that was what it was. After two and a half hours of streams, last time I was playing, I got to this corridor and it broke me because you have to you have to figure out exactly how far you can dodge and then stand between the fucking spikes and plan for the next one. And the reason I just died there was because I was scratching my nose, which meant I had my hand off the controller, which means that the neutral position error on this broken controller just threw me straight into the spike. Or circular saw, or whatever it is. What was the bit I did last stream? Something like... Centipede Barry's discount band saws or some shit. Circular saws for all your home protection needs. It's okay if you can never reach your attic ever again. As long as, you know, the thieves that don't really exist that you're terrified of because you are... I... A feudal landlord in a mystical fantasy world. Uh, I forgot where this sentence was going. But, you know, it's not really about where you're going, it's about the journey. Hmm, actually, now that I think about it, that was perhaps a little bit of a deeper, deeper insight into my own uh, communication habits than it was intended to be. As one of the 
One of the things that anybody who's known me in real life or had some kind of a real life conversation with me will know is that, oh boy, it's tangents a go go up in my brain. I can't ever talk about something without talking about three other things first, which I'm convinced are relevant until later in the conversation when I realized they were completely unnecessary detail. This is frustrating to some people. The funny thing is I'm not bad at telling stories, but I am really bad at like relating information for that reason. Oh wait, I might be able to get straight up. Oh fuck. No. This window's way tighter than I feel like it was 30 seconds ago. Doesn't help that these are indeed the world's smallest goddamn platforms. Is it this simple? This can't possibly work, right? No. <laughs> okay, hold still. This is gonna be cool. And then I slam my head directly into a wall at 60 miles an hour. Ah, I'm glad you like it. I think it works good for a performance medium. I think that's one of the reasons people like my let's plays and my streams is that I can wax lyrical about the history of game design or the thematic implications of this thing in this particular game or indeed what I had for lunch, such as the delicious stew. I've got a bubble in a way in the other room that I hope my partner is stirring periodically because I sure ain't. Um, I'm, I'm generally of the opinion that uh, screaming at the, sc at the screen to fill content is like baby town beginner hack work. And I'm also of the opinion that leaving dead air is not great if you are streaming. It's a performance medium, you've got to do stuff. With, you know, you know exceptions for people who are exceptional at the game they're playing, of course. But yeah, I forgot where I was going with that. Hmm. But yes, yeah, so I remember what I was going to say, which is that like it's good. It's good for doing a casual entertainment performance medium such as this or such as telling rambling stories that don't go anywhere to entertain my flatmate while she does the dishes or something um however when you actually need to convey information to someone oh i notice you were reading the terrifying newspaper article why would you like to tell me what happens in the terrifying newspaper article sure okay but um we're going to have to take two or three tangents and I'm going to have to give you a whole bunch of context which you didn't actually turn out to need uh, or gain anything from hearing. You know, I might genuinely not be able to get through this corridor without a, without a non-broken controller. It, the positioning is so precise and I have to stand in it, which is impossible when my controller is actively fighting me all of the time. Oofed. No. Okay, that's the furthest I've gotten through the spike corridor. <laughs> this is definitely where I was stuck last stream. Ouch. It is kind of irritating that the the like ghost dodge will dodge through damage. It gives you iframes, but only for 
enemy attacks, not for environmental challenges. Yeesh. I would like to talk to the um, royal bureaucracy of the kingdom of Hallownest, please. Hi, yeah, I've been calling all day. I've been trying to get through to you on on your um, on your disabilities hotline because this is just not accessible. Like, I know that occasionally some compromises have to be made on the grounds of necessary infrastructure. I understand that the kingdom requires these spinning blade traps to function. I understand, like, that for abstract, esoteric reasons of mysticism, we have to have a conceptual mind palace full of only the gnarliest traps. But that doesn't mean that it has to be completely inaccessible. I think the real problem, your most prominent problem, is of course the lack of adequate seating for people who need to sit down from time to time. See, this is a funny joke because the game's save points are benches, um, and because this is a big hallway full of no stairs and also spinning blade traps. Which, as I'm sure you will agree, is very far from being accessible. As a disabled, these things are close to my heart. Although it has been a long time since I walked with a cane. I wonder if I should... Ever since I got long COVID, I've been wondering if I should go back to walking with a cane. I was really I was really pleased when I when I finally stopped needing it in 2019. Uh, pleased enough that I lost it and did not see it again, but... Eep! Ooh, motherfucker. Ugh. There we go. We're fine. It's okay. We're all good. Everything's fine. <gasps> Nothing to worry about. Okay, well, that's worry. That's worth worrying about. Honestly, this place is worse than Laudron for uh, accessibility problems, and that is an entire kingdom that has never discovered the uh, vital technology of the handrail. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dive in here. I'm just gonna reset this and start over. See, at least Laudron has the excuse of not having discovered the the handrail. That's a lie there. They super have handrails in some places in that game. In the old Dark Souls. But see, Hollow Nest also lacks the excuse of, of not simply being aware of the technology. We've seen handrails. We know that these these bug people had handrails. It's it's an inescapable historical fact that the bug people of Hollow Nest put handrails all over the damn place, just not in front of the spinning blade traps. Which I suppose is only a problem from my perspective, because I need to consider that, uh, of course, the goal of Hollow Nest is to have spinning blade traps everywhere. The fact that they make it completely inaccessible is incidental. Anyway, I have to eventually beat the final secret final actual hard mode boss of this game because I have to... Ah, oh, come on. have to prove to all of my various buddies that I'm better than them at games. This is one of the weird advantages and disadvantages of being a sort of a generalist gamer. Like, I've got friends who, like, love this game and played this game to death specifically. Um, but I... And oh, oh, because of that, obviously, are way better at it than me. But the thing is, I'm better than them at various other games. Because I'm like, instead of having super pro gamer strats at one game, I have a lot of like generally applicable gamer skills and I play a lot of different games. <laughs> I just enjoy being good at video games, I say. Dying eternally on this goddamn spike trap that I've already surmounted so many times. You're 
not generally mediocre at all things, Alice. You are very good at drawing cool art, often of fantasy goblins or noble knightly types. Plus you're fashionable, which I think is always worth mentioning. Fuck. I think I'm a little bit too low again. Ooh, yep, there we go. Drawing art can be a video game if you try hard enough. What you should do is start a broadly unpopular gaming YouTube channel. Uh, and um, do like highly produced in-depth let's plays of games instead of just making video essays like everybody else. Uh, and then also, because you haven't uh, tilted at enough windmills, decide to hand paint title art for every single series that you do, then you can blend them, you know. Alternatively, posting your art on Twitter could be considered a video game in that you were, you were given very direct scoring feedback about how well you're doing as compared to other people. Posting art on Twitter is like... the Ur video game. Something about the phrase, how well you're doing, always makes me think of um, surprisingly good comic book B-movie Constantine, starring Keanu Reeves as John Constantine, rendered by the adaptation American and uh, dark haired rather than a blonde cockney. I'm just going to jump on the spikes. Anyway, this was always supposed to be a short stream today because I haven't streamed in so long and I just want to make sure I actually do a goddamn stream eventually at some point. But I might be running low on energy soon. Anyway, I was saying something but I already forgot what it was. It's actually safer to pogo on the spinny blade uh, on the on the floor below this one. Now that I think about it, it's safer just to keep moving rather than to stop and line yourself up for another jump. The things we learn traversing Spike World. I wonder if the White King was just immune to spikes. What if that was his deal? Oopsie Daisy. Instituting a um, municipal spike propagation regime. That's a good episode title. So as to weed out the weak members of your society, which is terrible rhetoric and we will not stand for it. But then we are here to kill this guy, so, you know. Perhaps he'll be judged and found wanting by his own ideology, who knows. Or perhaps there's a legitimate reason for having all of these goddamn spinny blade traps in his palace. Maybe the real palace had no spinny blade traps at all. And it's only this uh, ancient lost memory version that has spinny blade traps. Yeah, it's his autistic special interest. You know, they didn't have trains. Actually, they did have trains, now that I think about it. They had trams. Okay, I've changed my mind. Far from far from being uh, far from far from hating him for being a an autocrat, I've I've suddenly endeared the uh, the White King to myself. I like to I'll, I'd, I love to imagine him in a little bug basement, ouch, uh, playing with his model tram system, little carved shell figurines of. Uh, the tr tramway bugs, whatever they were called. My good buddy that I ring a bell and he comes and helps me. Eek. 
Holy shit, I did it. Oh, God almighty, there's more. No, fuck! <laughs> this is what I mean. Every single, um... Oh, see, Alice, that's actually deeper than I was thinking. What I was thinking was that he was a ornery old motherfucker and, um... He didn't like the idea of anyone breaking into his subconscious. So he just, you know, did perform the psychic equivalent of setting a bunch of shotgun traps in your backyard to catch trespassers. Oh, I was right, that is a lot easier. I say, immediately slamming my head face first into a table saw. I'm beginning to imagine the White King as a kind of a J.K. Simmons kind of character. The royal bureaucrat comes to him like, Sir, uh, due to new uh, construction guild regulations, we're wondering if perhaps we should ban saws. And he goes, <gasps> Ban saws! My god, you're a genius! Which is, of course, ultimately beneficial to the uh, infinite brotherhood of... Um, Integrated saw mechanism workers. Local 42. Because, <laughs> of course, that requires them to install a great deal of them all throughout the kingdom. Oh, I'm sorry that your neighbours are screaming at each other, Bina. I'm glad you still find my voice calming and relaxing, which is the thing people say about my voice all of the time. I don't hear it myself. Whenever I'm editing, I'm like, wow, who is this whiny tea kettle type person? But I'm glad that my tea kettle whining can bring solace to a number of people. I was going to say a great number of people, but it's not. It's just a number of people. Related to that, actually. It's worth bearing in mind that my new YouTube series is going to start next week. A week late, but that's fine. No! Oh, don't be like that. You sounded fine when we played... Uh... Warhammer. War Warhammer Stabathon, or whatever it was called. Oh, hello. Is that a bug? Oops. Oh, oh, fuck. Was I supposed to be able to get in there? Is there a- <gasps> is there a secret? It looks like there's broken material there. Can I smash that open? Yeep. Well, not on this attempt. I don't think there's a secret room there, but I was sort of able to stand in it. I'm not sure if I just clipped into the wall or... Yeah, I think I'm... I think I... That was a clipping error. How am I supposed to get through that bottom one? The timing doesn't work. <gasps> oh my god, a shortcut. Holy shit. I can't believe I'm finally making it through. Yeah, you better bow down. You have any idea what I just went through? You fucking... God damn, dude. Get obliterated. I genuinely was starting to suspect I'd never make it through, but I did it. I finally reached the end of that zone. God damn. <laughs> Appears that I did not. How am I supposed to get through there? Yeah, I suppose I did at least crack open the shortcut, which means I don't have to deal with quite so much bullshit, although I have to deal with a non-zero zero amount of bullshit. What happens if I... 
Oh, there's just an infinite death wall, literally six inches to my right. I see how it is. Okay. I'm going to see how far I have to go to get to that shortcut. <laughs> And then I'm going to go have my delicious stew, which may or may not be delicious. The one I made earlier this week was pretty tasty, but that one had a little bit of red wine, just a, a little snifter to deglaze the pan because I've learned fancy words from watching MasterChef. While you studied MasterChef. Well, actually no, while I... There's a Master Chief joke there somewhere, but um, I'm struggling to find it. Actually, I should stream Halo. Halo's good. I like Halo. I used to play Halo with my brothers. It was like one of our major family bonding activities. That and Smash Bros, which is a really funny thing to play with your siblings. It's like something a bullying 1980s older sibling would say. Like, hey little duda, do you want to play Smash Bros? And they'd be like, maybe? And they'd be like, okay, time to play Smash Bros and smash you. It's funny that, it's funny that Halo would be an interesting change from my usual fare, because Halo feels like... Like, I've played so many different kinds of games. It's it's weird that I've never streamed or let's played on YouTube an FPS. Like, that's just one of my many genres that I enjoy. But I suppose I have kind of built a niche for myself in kind of, kind of like, um, not FPSs really and not, how the fuck do I get through there? It's just, I can't jump high enough up from the other side, can I? Am I missing something? No. But I actually, I have a lot to say about Halo critically, I think. And I have a great affection for it as a series because I have spent a hell of a long time playing it over the years. Oh, you've got to be joking. You know, I think this might genuinely be the hardest platforming challenge I've ever played in a game. I've played a shit ton of platformers because I've played a ton of everything. I've probably played like Easily 100 FPSs, probably like 60 platformers in my life. Probably maybe more, I don't know, if we count like my extensive PS1 catalog. Um, Jesus, I'm probably overestimating my numbers actually, but you know, there's a, there's a lot of them, you know. I wonder, maybe I should do a video. It's been ages since I did a hot take engine video. Maybe I should do one about like the exact, like my actual gaming body count, because I've probably played what have I got? I've got over 500 games on Steam and I've played at least half of them, enough to count as having played them, like completed them or played them for like 30 hours or whatever. And then I've, I've got like, I had like 40 games on GameCube and like 30 across PS1 and PS2, maybe only like 20, I'm not sure. Handful of, handful of Nintendo Wii games and I played, a, I played a whole bunch of like, I played a handful of other like N64 and, uh, Mega Drive games back when I was a kid. And there's GOG and a whole bunch of other PC games that I played as a kid that I don't have anymore. Oh, I'm rambling. Anyway, yeah, I've played an absolute shit ton of games because I am I am the most gamer. I am the gamer's gamer. I am. I like challenge and I like story and I like all kinds of different things. I 
was going somewhere with that, but I've completely forgotten what it was. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna call this the last try. Oh, hello! You guys have shown up just when I was deciding maybe to stop streaming. <laughs> well timed, Emission and Wuxfrov. Anyway, you've missed me. You've missed me be really good at this video game, and now you're just seeing me die over and over because I'm tired. Uh, but yeah, I haven't streamed in forever, so. I thought I should probably actually get back on that horse before it's over. I've actually opened a shortcut finally. The question is just getting back to that shortcut. But as I said, I'm probably going to call it a night after this one because I've been streaming for an hour and my throat's a bit sore. And plus, I've got that stew bubbling away in the other room. Well, this is it. Oh wait, I still have three more hit points. One day, eventually, I will beat this. I will beat this on stream and everyone will know that I beat the White King. The, uh... Secret final, extra tough, final, extra, extra actual secret bot. Okay, I, I'm rambling now. Like, I'm losing all control of my tongue. So, that's gonna be it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry about the awkward timing, Emotion and Wuxfrov. I hope you will see me again sometime soon, or that I will see you in my chat, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, will at least announce the next stream more than five minutes before it happens. I, uh, only did that today because it was kind of like a, like, I've been feeling guiltier and guiltier about not streaming all month, because it's been a month since I last actually streamed a game, but I've just had so much, I've been dealing with day to day that I haven't had, like, the energy to stream in the evenings. But... Here I am. I'm not going to commit to streaming more frequently, because if I do that, that will make me not do it. But the important thing is that I got past the puzzle I was stuck on. And that's all that really matters, because gaming is the most important thing in the universe, I said ironically. Anyway, <laughs> that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.